Okay, welcome guys to this preview episode before the final dungeon. We left off at the end of year 7, I believe, and our caravan is on year 14 at the moment. Since then we have um, ground a lot. We tried the final dungeon and it was a lot stronger than I remembered. So yeah, we, we just got completely destroyed in the final boss. It just wasn't working. We tried it a few times. There was no way we could do it. So yeah, we're not going to show that recording. It's gone, lost, boom, dead. We've farmed a lot of gear and artifacts for our characters. These take a long time to get and are very difficult to obtain. I'm going to briefly explain how we got each of the pieces of equipment that we obtained for our characters during this massive time skip. Okay, so I'll start with me as Kupo. The Ukes are different in that their ultimate weapon is not really an ultimate weapon, it's just the best weapon Ukes get. Um, their best weapon is called the Mystic Hammer. It's obtained by getting a legendary weapon scroll which drops off the River Bell Path boss when you get a score of over 96. That's the little bonus score at the end of a dungeon. This is not a 100% drop, but as long as you get over 96, it has a chance of dropping. This is a combined score for people playing on multiplayer, so your two scores will add together. If you are playing single player, the only way to find out what your bonus is is to plug in a GBA into the second slot and just have a look at it. That's what I did. I suggest for all of you trying to do this is to try and get the bonus um, the bonus score of inflict damage. It's the easiest one to do because you're always going to be inflicting damage. So just keep entering and exiting the zone. It's a bit annoying. It took me about 40 minutes once on Goblin Wall to get it and it was really pissing me off, but I did it in the end. And then your zone until you get the bonus of inflict damage. Then defeat every monster in the area before the boss and you're guaranteed to get it basically. Anyway, the Mystic Hammer requires a legendary weapon scroll, an alloy, which you can buy, an orichalcum, which you um, uh, you get an alloy, an orichalcum and an ancient potion. The orichalcum commonly drops in higher level stage 3 dungeons and off bosses in the artifact screen. The ancient potion comes from higher level monsters in stage 3, that's level 3 of evolution, Mount Kalanda. Alloy you can buy from just normal shops. The Mystic Hammer gets the unique focus attack magic bomb. It's a huge charge up time. Like seriously, I'll show you it in the um, first episode we do, the final dungeon area. It has a huge charge up time and a massive radius stun, which is actually kind of useful. We made my character a time mail, which gives resist slow plus one, which makes me immune to slow from weaker monsters. Very useful for a spellcaster. The time armor design made with mithril is made with mithril and a worm antenna, which you can get from the little carrion worms in the village of Tida. We also made me a flame helm, which is made with two iron and a magma rock, which drops off most bombs and fire based enemies, which will help me. I've also got a mithril helm, I never got around to getting a diamond one. Now onto the accessories. Only one may be equipped at a time. I have many accessories on Kubo. A flame badge with resist 5 plus 1, a gold necklace with resist petrify plus 1, very useful for some bosses. If you combine like two things together, so say um, an earth chance gives you resist petrify and resist slow plus 1. If you have a gold necklace with resist petrify plus 1, you've got resist petrify plus 2. Now that will actually make you be able to resist attacks from bosses because they're usually counted as strong or something, which is really useful. So you won't be able to be petrified by the ant lion, possibly. I haven't tested it on the ant lion. I've tested it on the be breath from the dragon in Canal Crush, and it does provide two immunity if you've got plus two, uh, which is really, really useful. Um, I've also got twisted spectacles, which gives spell range plus 20, which is made with eyewear techniques. Two crystal balls and one gold. The crystal balls come from the mushroom forest, the gold you can just farm elsewhere. I think that might also come from the mushroom forest. If you cast life times two, life, and then put two cures onto it, so you do life and then let go of two cures at the same time, you'll um, fuse together haste, which is actually really useful, uh, seriously. And with these, um, um, with the demon's earring, which I my uke has, it gives spell duration plus 30, which is really, really useful. I think um, Clavax can get plus 60 seconds, or plus 60, whatever that means, but it didn't really work that well, we found, because we couldn't actually get it. It was just too hard. A Devil's Claw never dropped from Revenator We had everything else, which we could not get a Devil's Claw shot from Revenator It's made using a demon's kit. The design is obtained from the Mushroom Forest. One gold and a Devil's Claw. The most useful accessory I have for Kupo is the Wisdom Charm, which gives minus 10 casting time, made using a design from the Goblin Wall, a needle from Cactus in the Desert, and a Coral Whisker from Moshet Manor or Kalanda's Corals. This makes my Uke into a spell cast machine. Like, seriously, I pretty much do. As soon as I start charging a spell, it's ready to go now. It's great. It's going to be really useful for the final dungeon where time is of the essence because you are getting killed so easily. Um, my final stats before the final episode are 56 strength, 64 defense, and 65 magic. Possibly I might have more magic, so I'm going to try and get one more magic accessory, but I'll let you know if I do. 
Uh, right, now let's move on to Wolf. If you can't tell I'm doing this all by myself, they're all busy. <laughs> uh, Wolf's ultimate weapon is it's just amazing. It really is an ultimate weapon. It's called the Dream Catcher. It's obtained by getting a lunar weapon design from the Kanala Karash boss with a score of 241 plus. That may seem high, but considering the amount of monsters in the zone, it's not that high. What I will say is... Um, all these ones where I'm putting scores in, that always means level 3. They will only drop from level 3 evolutions. So you need the Lunar Weapon from Kanala Crash Boss, a Wind Crystal with a score of 198 plus from the Cave Worm in Celebration Cave, and a Desert Fang, which was so annoying to get, from the Ant Lion with a score of 181 in Linari Desert, and you also need one Auric Alchem. Uh, this makes the Dream Catcher, which like the Yukon Kavat ultimate weapon, has a base strength of plus 35. It also gives the unique focus attack Meteor Blast, which summons a meteor and drops it onto the enemy, dealing lots of damage and stunning. It's actually really useful. It's got a wide radius. The Kavat, Lilty, and Selkie ultimate um, focus attacks deal half a heart damage to the user, which isn't too bad as they are really powerful. It's kind of like an off trade off, which is really good. Wolf has a diamond plate, a diamond belt, which are the strongest common armors made out of commonly dropping diamond ore and orichalcum, which is seriously, I've gone through so much orichalcum. <laughs> Wolf has the accuracy watch, which gives him resist slow plus one, a speed talisman, which gives minus 10 focus attacks charge time, obtained through the secrets of speed design from Kafrogus Mine, using a needle from Cactus and a zoo's beak from the zoos in the desert. Really useful, it makes him able to charge up his meteor blast so quickly, and we all know how much Wolf loves his meteor blast. Well, you don't yet, but you'll see him. He's happy as it can be. There is a better talisman that gives minus 15 charge time obtained through the design Brigandology from the Teeter boss with a score of 242 plus. A wind crystal from the Celepation Cave boss, 198 plus score, and an orc belt from the Cafergus Mine boss, score 146 plus, and a green sphere which has conflicting reports of it, where it's coming from. My guide or the game facts I've read, they all seem to say different things, and we haven't really tested it. Some say it comes from the Teeter boss with a high score or Velu Sluice high score. Personally, I think it's far more likely that it comes from Velu Sluice as Teeter already has a high score drop. So try there first, and it makes sense because if you think it's a green sphere and that. Iron Golem had a sphere in his chest, so it might be that. Um, Wolf also has a healing headband. It's for men only, which has a high HP region rate. The healing kit design comes from Kalanda, uses a white silk from Wraiths from Kafergus Minor Rebna Tarar, a tiny crystal from the Mushroom Forest, and a remedy from Canal Crush. These are all off normal monsters. The region rate on both the male and female varieties is insane. It can offset the damage from the focus text and make it so you barely need healing in most dungeons because of the time you're running between each mob. It's really, really good. It heals half a heart, then a whole heart, half a heart, then a whole heart, and it's quite often. Usually you only really region if you're carrying the chalice, but this is really good. You combine that with the chalice, your HP is going to skyrocket. Wolf's final stats are Strength 65, Defense 74, and Magic 34. Now let's move on to everyone's favourite Kavat, Jenny. Her ultimate weapon is Ragnarok. Um, it was a total royal pain in the arse to farm. Seriously, I hate this. Why is the Kavat one so annoying? I mean, the Lilty one should be the most annoying, but no, this one is. It's designed the... Des it's designed the dark weapon comes from the worst level ever, Rebna Tyrell, with a score of 187 plus on the boss, which is just horrible. A cursed crook from the Goblin Wall boss with a score of 173 plus, an ancient sword from the River Bell Path boss with a score of 150 plus, and an Oricalcum. What I would say is if you just don't get the design to drop, remember it's only a 1 in 4 chance that the boss will drop one of these things. You've really just got to keep at it. I'm lucky I got um, Jenny scrolling 1 out of 1 on the Rebna Tara thing. It took me forever to get the Desert Fang for Matt's thing, and don't even get me started on the Cursed Crook. I basically farmed it all for them because they're all busy, so I basically did this all myself. <laughs> um, Jenny's helped with a few things, but yeah, it's just a nightmare. I don't wish this on anyone, but it, it's fun, I guess. It's just not fun zoning in and out to try and get the um, right bonus line. Ragnarok's focus attack is Shadow Blade, which is insanely powerful. It one-shots most weaker enemies, but sadly is it's pretty hard to use as you can't just like overshoot the enemy. You have to land on the enemy. It requires pinpoint precision. If you're hit by it, you are engulfed in a shadowy free hit attack, usually end your life. So yeah, you get hit by that and your weak enemy, you're pretty much dead. It's really useful. Of course, it takes half a heart of you as well. Jenny has a diamond plate. We tried to farm the ultimate armor, a Gaia plate, which has plus 30 defense. Kavat only. 
Design comes from the from the Celebration on Cave Boss 247 plus score, a Lord's Robe score 106 in the Moshek Manor, and a King Scale from the Daemon's Court Boss 129 plus score, and two Oracle Alchemists, not one but two. But sadly, we couldn't get the design to drop, and the LPS to end someday. And yeah, we both agreed. An extra, I think it's like free defense, isn't really worth it. Jenny has a Storm Shield, which gives plus one thunder resist, and a Rune Shield, which increases the range of spells like the Yuke accessory, which is really useful. The Rune Shield is made via the Magic Shield scroll from Canal Crush, a Bronze, and a Corridor Whisker. The Magic Shield isn't from a boss, you've just got to find it in the zone in a chest or something or an enemy. Uh, a Bronze and a Corridor Whisker. The Ultimate Shield, which we didn't get around to farm, is the Chocobo Shield, which has plus 25 defense made from the Legendary Shield scroll from Moshet Mana Boss, 133 plus score, or a Calcum Times 2, and a Yellow Feather, which is also from Moshet Mana. Jenny has a Resist Poison plus 1 accessory and a Resist Ice plus 1 accessory. A Resist Paralysis accessory, but most of all, she wears the Female Region accessory as the tank it is really important. The Jade Bracer is made from the Fashion Kit from Moshet Mana. A jade, it requires a Jade, two Silvers, and a Pressed Flower, which comes from Canada Crush. Jenny's final stats are Strength 74, Defense 69, and Magic 38. Yeah, no 69 jokes, guys. Right, now I'll just quickly go over the Lilty Ultimate Weapon in case you're playing along as a Lilty and you want to know how to get it and stuff. Right, so the Lilty's Ultimate Weapon is unique in that it has a plus 40 strength as opposed to the other races plus 35. The Longiness made from the, the Celestial Weapon Scroll from Kalanda's Boss with a score of 160 plus. It requires two Oracalcum, a Dragon's Fang from Canal of Karash Boss of 241 plus, a red eye from the Kalanda boss score with 128 plus. Now I know I was saying about Kanal Crush has a lot of stuff in it, and it actually has the life ring there, so it has a cure and the life ring. But to get the life ring, you need a score of 302, I believe, plus on the boss. Really hard to get, so we haven't actually managed to get any life rings yet. We may maybe do one more before the final thing, but yeah, we're kind of pressed for time as me and Kucha going to university and Matt's busy. Me and Jenny are going to university rather. And yeah, we, we're running out of time, so we've really had to push to get this LP finished. <laughs> um, the Longinus ultimate at focus attack is called Blade Storm, which utterly devastates the opponents. The strongest single attack in the game, it literally will kill most things. Seriously, it does insane damage. Farming all these weapons is very time consuming and hard to do, but I'd say it's worth it, but really the decision is going to be up to you. Now, if you can't be bothered, there is another option, the Greatest Weapon Scroll, which is only got from a high-level Alchemist family. My dad, you know, he kept giving out scrolls, or eventually, because I leveled him up so much, he did give out the Greatest Weapon Scroll. It makes a weapon that is 35 base strength, so it's the same as most races' ultimate weapons, but not the Lilties, it's 35 even if you're a Lilty. It's a lot easier to make, however, it costs a lot more gil, it costs 50,000 gil, as opposed to the usual 5k for the real ultimate weapons. All the greatest weapons require one Auric Alchem and one Ultimate, which comes from a level 3 merchant in Teepa. Turns out, Jenny and Wolf didn't level up their families by spend sending correct items home, I blame Matt, slapping fish in his letter and not actually levelling up his blacksmith family, which in turn levels up the other people in town. Um, make sure you talk to the merchant family each year as well with everyone, and they will level up because they'll like you. If they had done this, we would have had access to Ultimate and Dark Spheres. The Dark Sphere is used in the Ring of Invincibility accessory, which is obtained from a high-level alchemist. This accessory requires one Auric Alchem and a Dark Sphere. It prevents you from being stunned, which is so amazing, it's ridiculous. You literally just can't be interrupted. It's awesome. Uh, I know a lot more about the game now, so I really suggest you to... Um, you choose an alchemist and a merchant if you have more than two players, then probably a blacksmith, then a tailor. We kind of did this wrong. Um, the FAQ, the game, um, the game fact um, link I put in the video description, is very useful. It explains everything about how you level up the fam. It's a lot better than I can in this video, so make sure you check it out. It's also got all the all these numbers and things if you want, and you can, you know, look at it easier without having to rewatch the video or whatever if you really want to farm. There's also loads of other accessories that we just haven't gone over. There's so much stuff in this game. This game's huge. It's insane how huge it is. I didn't quite realise... I mean, I played this game, completed it before, but I never really did it in this much depth. I mean, I was like, oh, I want to be a farmer. I'm going to be a farmer. I like farming. <laughs> no, don't be a farmer. Also, we found out if you send home seeds to um, your family, eventually they'll grow food trees. Matt has, like... And a striped apple tree, which is annoying because we needed them striped apples in his um, town now. They're up at his blacksmith forge. 
For the final dungeon, make sure you have 10 Phoenix down to each and 10 to 15 of your favourite foods. One thing I never mentioned was that foods increase your stats temporarily. Meats and fish give plus two strength, fruits plus two magic, and corns and root vegetables plus two defense. These effects last five minutes, but don't eat foods that you don't like because it will lower your stats. It's important you have plenty of your favourite foods you for the final dungeon for easy healing. Now what I will say is if you if you say you're like um Say you're like a Selkie, you want high, or like a, I don't know, let's say you're a Lilty and you want high strength, but your favourite food's like, plus magic food or something, like fruit. Don't worry saying, oh, it's going to lower my stats, just go to a town, go to a field of food and find that, the girl there by the windmill that sells the food, and just buy tons and tons of meat or fish, and just keep eating it until your favourite food's meat, and then you're ready for the final dungeon. It's a tiny stat increase, but who knows, it might help. Uh, I'm sorry this episode probably took quite a while but and probably insanely boring but it's been a big time skip like what is it like six seven eight years i don't even know it may even be longer by the time you we actually get to record the final episode and a lot's happened to the teapot caravan i thought i should explain it all in detail in advance of the final dungeon so join us next time for the final frontier on let's play final fantasy crystal chronicles thanks for watching